All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er video. Colton McKivitz, according to Bleacher Report, is going to be the biggest bust for the 49ers in 2024. I don't necessarily agree. We'll talk about it coming up next. Uh, first, we're brought to you by Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or until they run out, and they do run out. Go say hi to Damon and Mary, get some brisket, get some brisket chili. Tell them that Larry Kruger sent you. And this video is also brought to you by our good friends at Sharp Corners Sports Cards and Collectibles. They're at 205 Cypress Avenue down in Pacific Grove, California. Call Anthony Catania, my good buddy down there at 831-521-5264 for all your sports cards and collectible needs. And in the first Friday of every month, they do a little sidewalk deal out in front of the store on, um, on the first Friday of every month. So check that out throughout the warm summer months. A uh, little sidewalk deal down at uh, at Sharp Corners Sports Cards and Collectibles in Pacific Grove. All right, let's talk a little bit about um, the story that's out right now. It's a Bleacher Report story. And Bleacher Report, and I forget the writer, but he's predicting Colton McKivitz will be the Niners' biggest weakness, biggest bust, he says, for the 2024 season. Um. McKivitz allowed nine sacks last year, 59 pressures in 659 pass blocking snaps. He had a 58.3 pass block grade from pro football focus, um, <clears throat> which is not great. Um, his run blocking grade was not great either. It's 66.3. It was better than his pass protection grade, but not as good as you would want it to be. So 66.3. PFF run block grade for Colton McKivitz, um, 58.3 pass block grade, uh, according to PFF for Colton McKivitz. And they say he is the biggest weakness or the biggest bust for the 49ers uh, going into this year. And you know what? To me, it's easy to go at Colton McKivitz. It's really easy. Why? Because it, he's not a blue chip player. Uh, he was a fifth round draft choice. In the 2020 draft, Niners took him in the fifth round. They liked him a lot. They had a gold star designation for him. But it's easy to, to, to you know, be McKivitz is a disaster. Um, he had a rough first game in week one against T.J. Watt, gave up three sacks. I think he would acknowledge that. But then bounced back and had a really, really nice year. And I know a lot of people want to blame McKivitz uh, for losing the Super Bowl. But it really was Burford who missed the key block on Chris Jones, um, where IU could beat his man, uh, and he was on the backside, and Purdy was not allowed to go through his progressions because of the heat that Jones put on hit Purdy. But that was a missed block from from uh, Burford at right guard, who you know instead of blocking Chris Jones, combo blocked uh, Jake Brendel's man inside, so leaving Jones a free run at. Uh, Brock Purdy, but that wasn't Colton McKivitz that that blew that play. Um, and yet, lots of people seem to think, you know, oh, the O line had struggles, and McKivitz is the guy, and you know, the rest of the guys are. Trent, what you're going to go? If you're going to rip the Niner O line, which you know was pretty good last year as far as opening run lanes for runners, as far as sacks allowed, they didn't give up a ton of sacks. I think they give up the six fewest sacks in the league. I think they were third or fourth in the league in yards per carry running the ball. So I mean. What this horrible offensive line, the, there's some metrics, you know, you look at the stats that you could point to and say, well, was it really that bad? I mean, I don't think the Niners offensive line is elite by any stretch, but I think it's more closer to mid pack than bottom third. I mean, Trent Williams is the best left tackle in the game. I like Aaron Banks. I think Aaron Banks is a good left guard. Second round pick in 2021. Now, I'm not a big fan of Jake Brendel, but he was a pro Bowl alternate a year ago. Um, and he's a technician. He's an undersized technician. He's smart. He makes all the right calls. Um, you know, he, he ha doesn't make a lot of mental mistakes. He's not, the m he's 285. And if you're going up against DJ reader, uh, DJ reader is going to own the a gap. And that's just reality. And we saw that in the Cincinnati game. So I'm more, I'd probably be more critical of Brendel. Uh, Feliciano, I thought played pretty well considering they you know, picked him up off the street as a street free agent from the New York Giants. I thought he played pretty well. Um, and then McKivitz, you know, you can do better. You know, I think the the thing that you can say about Colton McKivitz is if the 49ers 
hadn't blown the defensive tackle spot so repeatedly. I mean, they draft Solomon Thomas. He couldn't play dead. They drafted Javon Kinlaw. He had knee problems. He, he never materialized. You know, if they if they had taken one of those high picks in the first round that they invested in a defensive tackle and instead invested it in a Tristan Wirfs or an offensive tackle, I think they would have a little bit more ba- better balance. And then McKivitz would be in his rightful spot. McKivitz should be Jalen Moore. Right now, Trent Williams is the left tackle. McKivitz is the right tackle. Jalen Moore is the swing tackle. In an ideal world, Trent Williams would be your left tackle. Maybe a Tristan Wirfs would be your right tackle. And Colton McKivitz would battle Jalen Moore this summer for the right to be the swing tackle. And that's that's kind of, you know, that's kind of more where that's his level. That's Colton McKivitz's level. He should be, he's a versatile, dependable uh, guy who can play almost every spot. And that should have great value, except the 49ers don't have a starting right tackle and they're asking him to be that starting right tackle and he's doing the best he can do. But at the end of the day, what is Colton McKivitz? He's a swing tackle. He's a third tackle. He's not a starting right tackle. Um, and no offense to Colton, if he's watching this, you know, I mean, I, the guy has gotten every bit, every ounce of, of talent out of his career. Um, and I think he's, you know, overly maligned. Uh, I think he's he's a pretty dependable player, and if you ask Brock Purdy about him, if you ask Kyle Shanahan about him, if you ask John Lynch about him, they're going to have a whole higher level of of opinion of of Colton than the fans do, and then a lot of the media do. So what does that tell you? It tells you that he's probably a little bit better than we think um, overall. So I personally don't think McKivitz is going to be a bust or be the weak spot for the 49ers. But the Niners don't have tons of weak spots. And I understand why Bleacher Report, you know, went there because they said, oh, you know, last year the offensive line was a problem. They didn't improve it. Who's the guy who could be replaced? It would be McKivitz, and they haven't replaced him and this and that. So we'll call him a bust. But I think it's just it's 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 the low hanging fruit, and it's just way too easy. Um, so who if if McKivitz isn't the weak, the weak link for the Niners. Potentially, who is? What is the Niners' weak link? And I would say there's no weak link at receiver. Um, you got you got a good group of receivers, and you just added Jacob Cowing and Ricky Pearsall. Um, Kittle is an is a Pro Bowl caliber tight end. Purdy was an MVP candidate at quarterback. McCaffrey was an MVP candidate at running back. Hughes checks maybe the best fullback in the game. You got good depth at almost all your spots on offense. So who? If McKivitz isn't the weak, weak link, what, who is or what is? I would say, okay, we don't know exactly what we're going to get out of Leonard Floyd or what exactly we could expect to get out of Malik Collins or Jordan Elliott or Yatir Gross Matos. We're not exactly sure what we're going to get out of those guys. But I think I've seen enough from Floyd in his career to feel like he's an upgrade on what they've had. Yatir Gross Matos, I think, is coming off a nice year in Carolina, and I, and I like uh, the potential for Malik Collins and Jordan Elliott inside. So I won't go with them as the weakness. Um, I think I, I guess my first spot to point to is at a weakness, I'd say, you know, with no Dre Greenlaw, who, you know, tore his Achilles, you know, on Super Bowl Sunday, probably has no chance to come back before what, December, maybe Thanksgiving. Uh, he's going to be out 10 weeks for sure. I mean, he's going to be out a long time. Whoever steps in for Dre Greenlaw, that's a concern. Um, the Niners went in the draft or in free agency and added Devondre Campbell, um, whose best statistical year was 2021. And I think De- Devondre Campbell could be a weakness, could be a primary weakness. Um, you know, I mean, he had kind of three kind of up and down years in Green Bay. Now he's claiming Green Bay didn't use him effectively or listen to him enough about what he thought the defense needed. Um, he claimed that Green Bay badly misused him. And sure enough, their defensive coordinator, Joe Barry, did get fired at the end of the year. He was fired. Uh, he noted that, um, I guess, Campbell wanted Green Bay to play more man-to-man. Uh, he wanted them to blitz more, dial up more pressure, and they rarely listened to him. 
Um, but if you look at Campbell's game, I think he's been in steady decline since Green Bay gave him a five-year, $50 million contract. He's missed 10 games over the last couple seasons with injury. Um, you know, he said that he lost respect, all respect for some of Green Bay's defensive coaches. Johnny Holland, the Niners linebacker coach, says um, that he's that that uh, Campbell is gravitating to the 49ers system. Uh, but Trey Greenlaw is a special player. And to have to step in at inside backer and cover that whole second level with Fred Warner uh, and replace Trey Greenlaw, that's a tall, tall ask. So I would say Devondre Campbell is likely um, the 49ers' biggest weakness. Now, if it's not Devondre Campbell, who is it? Well, you know, you right away you go to the corner. But, you know, you look at the corners this year, you say Mooney Ward and uh, Demo Lenore were your two starting corners. And then they added Isaac Yadams coming off a phenomenal year with, with uh, New Orleans. I mean, Yadam really had his breakout campaign. Ambry Thomas at times played well for you last year. Renardo Green was your second round pick out of Florida State. Uh, he's a tenacious uh, defender. Sam Womack from Akron is a uh, fifth round pick in 2022. I still think he, I really like Womack's talent. Darrell Luter was a fifth round pick last year out of South Alabama. He, he's big and long and rangy and has dominant physical traits. Chase Lucas was signed as a free agent. He's got some special team ability. There's Rocky Sin, who comes over from Baltimore. He's a veteran corner who's who's played a lot in the NFL. So I, you know, you look at that and you say, well, wait a second. Mooney, Yadam, Lenore, Ambry, Renardo Green, Womack, that's six. Looters seven. Rocky Sin's eight. Chase Lucas is nine. I mean, you got nine corners that are probably NFL. Keeman Hall. Eh, let's say he's the camp body guy there. But, I mean, you got nine NFL caliber corners. Most teams keep five. You might keep six. They got nine. So they're pretty deep there. I would say that I don't think McKivitz is the weakness. I think it might be Devondre Campbell. But I, I'll say this. I, my, the, what gets my vote for the biggest bust or biggest weakness of the Niners today? It's free safety or safety behind. You want to call strong safety. Um, I think Jair Brown's probably going to play free safety. Hafanga is going to play strong safety. Hafanga is coming off the ACL, might not be ready for week one. Uh, George Odom's a special teamer. Love him. Great special teamer, but a special teamer. Malik Mustafa is a really good prospect, but he's a rookie fourth round draft choice. Eric Harris and Taylor Hawkins, uh, Jalen Mahoney from Vanderbilt. I mean, these guys are more like you know, back of the roster, practice squad, you know, guys, filler, you know, street free agent types. So, I mean, to me, I mean, it's easy to say it's McKivitz, but you have, we have no idea um, what that, you know, if Malik Mustafa can play that strong safety out of the, out of the shoot. And if he can't, it might be Eric Harris time or Taylor Hawkins or Jalen Mahoney. And those guys, come on. So I would say free, I would say the safety spot opposite Jair Brown. If you're going to play Jair at free, then it's the strong safety spot. Um, with a, As long as Hafanga is out, to me, that, sa that starting safety spot opposite Jair Brown could be their primary weakness. As long as Greenlaw is out, that starting inside backer opposite Fred Warner could be their primary weakness. So Bleacher Report, says the Niners primary weakness is Colton McKivitz. Um, and I understand, I understand, but Devondre Campbell is totally unproven and in this defense, and who knows if he's going to be the same player that he was early in his career, um, played in Atlanta, I think Arizona, um, you know, is he going to dial it back to the young Devondre Campbell? Uh, or is he going to look like the inconsistent guy that the Niners picked on at times when they went against Green Bay? Um, and then free say, and then safety wise, if, if Fafanga can't go week one, I think that's the primary weakness. Who's the free safety. If it's the, if, if you're going to play Jair at, free, at strong safety, who's the free safety, Renardo green, Malik Mustafa. Um, if it, if you're playing uh, Jair at, at free safety, who's the starting strong safety? Mustafa, Eric Harris. So to me, that second safety and that second linebacker 
are probably the biggest weaknesses um, and the biggest concerns coming. I mean, run D overall, when you were not, you struggled against the run last year. Now there's no Armstead, no Greenlaw, no Hafanga. Those are arguably your three best run defenders on all three levels of your defense. So your run def- run defense, I think overall, is that would have to be considered um, a major question mark. But if you just want to say an actual person, Who's the, you know, one individual who's, you know, you're worried about bleach reports, worried about Colton McKivitz. I'm worried about Devondre Campbell and Malik Mustafa, the second linebacker, the second safety. Can the Niners get effective play out of those two spots? Then I would put McKivitz. McKivitz is a concern, but I don't think he's primary concern. He's more of like a second or third on the list of concerns is Colton McKivitz. I'd say the first one is Campbell. The second one is who's the second safety. The third one is Colton McKivitz. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave me your comments in the uh, comment section below. Thanks to Pagan and Pickle for being the title sponsor of the Krug Show. And uh, thanks to Sharp Corner Sports Cards and Collectibles for sponsoring this video. Thanks to all of you guys for supporting the Krug Show on YouTube.